When I was in the primary school, uh, when I learned something in the classroom, uh, I would like to do the practical aspect of it. So what I, I, I remember uh, when we were learning about when uh, metal would expand when you heat it up. So I would go home and would use a small lamp or whatnot, and I would tie a copper wire and put a nail on it and try to have it touch a coconut, uh, I mean like a coconut shell. And it didn't work because of course the, the thing will not expand that far, but at least I learned that thing. And the one that uh, I like to do at that time also, I will make my own torchlight learning. So I will get a small this light bulb, the one that people use for bicycle kind of thing. And then I will go and try to get some battery. Uh, mostly those are already, what they call it, been thrown away. So I will dry them and then we'll take a piece of paper and wrap them and put a wire on it and we'll use it because my house at that time is uh, the light will be off by 11 or so, 11 p.m. So I will use this small battery to, I like to read a lot of books. Uh, that when I'm in the primary school. And then uh, I was very fortunate to be accepted into Mara Junior Science College or Matanda Science Mara. Uh, that's where really the teachers especially pushed me towards uh, likings of science. My mentor would be, in the high school, would be one of my physics teacher. Uh, so he identified me. I'm, a, I'm not a brilliant or so-called top student in the class, but he identified that my interest is in science. So he would call me from time to time and give me some kind of uh, motivation, saying that, well, I can see that you are interested, in, especially in physics and chemistry. So he will call me and ask me to help others also. So I feel kind of, well, among so many students, somebody can identify you, so that really motivated me. And I met him recently, and I did tell him that I really, you know, for what he has done to me. So that, some kind of, I would say more like appreciation from the teacher point of view, but to the student, it means a lot of things, yeah. So in, then when I was in Form 4, Form 5, I really liked chemistry a lot. So I decided to do, uh, actually I wanted to do petroleum engineering. I thought petroleum engineering would deal a lot with chemistry, but then another teacher, a counselor, also retired already now, and he told me, no, chemistry and petroleum is two different things. You should go into chemical engineering. Uh, so these two, three people is the one who uh, motivated me. In that. Those are all from my high school of Matanda Science Mara teachers here. Yeah. Uh, actually, nanotechnology, when you go to that level, many, I, I would say, areas of uh, field will go and combine them. Meaning that you can have people working in mathematics, also work in nanotechnology, physics, mostly physics, chemistry, bio even. So at that level, basically, uh, all field of sciences can uh, come in and work together. Of course, in nanotechnology, uh, if you work in the area of uh, material, mostly people from physics or chemistry, some of them. But if you work in application, you can come from people from the electronic industry or mechanical. So various group of uh, scientists are working in the same area. But of course, they are looking different way of doing things. Uh, this is a good question because how you define uh, whether you have done enough. But for myself, is uh, Normally, I will look at it from uh, my student point of view, whether they, when they graduated, where would they be accepted. Uh, many of my students now got uh, been offered even to do postdoc in Japan or in France. So that's one way of looking. Second thing, in terms of publication. So in this area alone, I've been working, uh, I've been publishing more than 100 papers. Even this year, maybe around 40 papers in nanotechnology. So, and the paper that I published in the journal, they are top of Q1 journal. So, and also I've been, uh, many, many times I've been asked to become the paper evaluators or reviewer and also board of editors. So that's how I benchmark myself. Uh, that is whether my research will be accepted and cited by others. And for example, for the about 250 papers so far I published, um, I have citation more than 3,000 plus. Uh, so that is how I benchmark myself, saying that, and then also I have some patterns and whatnot, and internationally recognized patterns. Uh, first of all, is the university. I think uh, the university, especially the deputy vice chancellor R&D and the vice chancellor, 
I think they gave a lot of support in terms of they identify. This was about five, six years back, maybe a little bit uh, earlier than that. The deputy watch identify who are have the projects going on that need some uh, help in terms of financial and whatnot, and they give me additional funding. At the same time, I think the key to all this is the students. I use the talent, the word talent. So most of our students, they have the potential, but you need to work with them together and then motivate them. I have one just one master student who just finished master now doing PhD. He managed to publish five international papers ISI, just for master work. But the way he worked, sometimes I said, you don't need to work that hard, but he said, no. I want to. So sometimes it's very important that the student get the. I think the ecosystem in Malaysia is there. The, the equipment, the facilities, everything there. It's just the talent, and you need to get the right talent. And then also, as far as the scientists, as my part, I like to go uh, into one particular area, but deeper and deeper, rather than going into too many areas. Because sometimes you go too many areas, you will be like off. Two, one is the facility. Second, maybe the knowledge in the area. Uh, so, but of course you have to know when to move because sometimes one area will be so-called get saturated then you need to find your niche in that area. So, but you cannot go into too many areas. So I have one uh, professor last time from Japan that I talked to him. He'd been working in the same area for 30 years. But I told him that Malaysian scientists are much better. He said, why? I said, one Malaysian scientist can work in 30 areas in one year. Uh, so sometimes when you are not focused, you cannot go to the to the next level. You can be just a normal player, but you need to have the niche in the area. So I think the university has been playing a very, very important role in, in calculating uh, the importance of research and talent development and whatnot. Yeah, it will. Uh, that's why I myself personally, I've been going to a lot of high school now. In fact, especially with the MRSN I was telling you, Mara Junior Science College, because I started from there and I see why so many so-called now entrepreneurs or even uh, CEOs are all science background actually, but they started new company because they are very creative and innovative. So now I'm going to the, but I think uh, the counselor, especially the school counselor, they have to play a very important role because sometimes the student or the children, they are not aware what's going on. So they will find the easiest way to go into, for example, like, Instead of going to science, you want to go into accounting or what other program. Because they think that it's easier to pass. Uh, I think, but if they show interest in that area, especially in science, I think they would like to do. So for me, it will be a big loss. Because science in Malaysia, I think when I started 40 years back, I think now it's thriving much better. The only thing is that lack of exposure of the importance of science, especially at the high school or form one. So that's why some school now after PMR, they will have the science camp and whatnot, and they will invite people from the industry. I joined one particular program recently, and I brought people from Motorola, Intel and whatnot to have a, like a robotic kind of uh, lab session, and the student Actually, they have interest, but it's all about physics. We don't show about robot yet. We talk about physics first, about this. And then they see, oh, there is the need to have knowledge in this area. So I think the way we introduce science also need to be slightly different than what we used to have. That's my, that's my opinion. I think uh, talking to, I mean, I, I have a quite a, a close collaboration with Japan, especially, and then also now in France. Uh, actually, they they. They know Malaysian is very strong. Malaysian are very strong in science and technology. They always come to me and ask for more and more students. They want to take because they have the maybe knowledge, but they don't have the talent to do it. So we are in terms of that. I think we have we have a lot of talent, and some of these students when they go overseas, they are doing very very well. The only thing, the culture maybe when they come here, slightly different culture, but. The potential, I always talk about the potential. The potential is very much now. I go to a lot of high school. I can see these are the leaders of the future and they will do better than what we're having right now. I'm sure of that. It's a matter of uh, giving them a little bit of guidance and also a little bit of uh, motivation and the importance of science uh, building the nation. I think that because I always read the book about 
uh, many, many uh, civilizations, especially the one from southern Spain, Cordova and all this, Andalus, they become who they are, not because of the strength, but because of the knowledge. And each house, I was, when I was reading a book, each, every house has its own library. So you need not to be that big, but the culture of liking Elmo or knowledge, I think that will thrive and science will go, I mean, naturally, because science, the meaning of science, Latin is mean knowledge. So any knowledge is science. So I think that's why we have to go back to that. People that has knowledge should be appreciated or be acknowledged in that culture or that. And then we can move to the next level. That's, that's my opinion.